Okay, the Korg Kronos Editor Librarian. Uh, this is just kind of an overview. Uh, I'm making this video because this is really one of the first times really using it and using it for um, workflow for myself. And everyone just was asking a friend of mine that has got a Kronos uh, 2. Told him about the editor and he said he didn't have it. And so we walked him through uh, how cool it can be. And would like to share some of the um, some of the features that I've gotten out of it. So basically I'm using the 3.1 on a Mac. I'm running a Mojave right now, so I don't know. Uh, you have to check the website for your compatibility of uh, OS. But uh, it's a clever uh, plugin editor. And you uh, can see you got the banks, all the banks here. And uh, very much reminiscent of using the actual Kronos itself. And I'm running the Kronos. The Kronos is actually, uh, actually just behind me on a uh, multi-tiered keyboard rack. And I have it going through USB. And I'm actually controlling it through my Phantom uh, 7 that I have right here. And what's, what's nice about that is, is that uh, the Phantom 7 velocity curve is so much more responsive to the sounds of the Kronos. Uh, even more so than the actual keyboard of the Kronos, the keybed. You can hear the extra spank. See how you can hear that extra? Uh, and I, and I had, uh, maybe you guys out there can can get more out of your key bed, uh, but I but I just couldn't do it. Uh, I couldn't get it out of there. Here's um, like the Tremolo Mark Fives, EP Dinos. What's the Tremolo right here? And then, because um, I didn't have a transpose button on the. There's no dedicated transpose on the actual Kronos itself, so with the Phantom, I can transpose it. So, so just that right there makes it just more, it's in the studio, more of a joy to use. And even here, click on the picture, just like on the Kronos, click on this, and uh, you can double click or you can right click. You can see all the different little uh, effects that they have. Uh, or, oops, you click on it and you spin the wheel and it responds, it's on your mouse, I mean. Real nice. Very responsive stuff. And like you said, you can interact with it like like the Kronos you would. Drives. Your model types, see? Go in the EP1. Okay. Let's go back. So one of the uh, cool features in this applies to single mode so forth i'm gonna go to sequence mode okay and i'm gonna go to uh this is a song template that i had made and uh if you look at it under the play tab you can kind of see the assignments uh just like on the chronos like here would be my loud made maze grand uh channel two the mark tremolo a DX7 sound that I can, you know, an FM or mod 7 sound, so forth and so on. And this kind of gives you the status of what you have. The beauty behind this, let's say I go into here, bank A, B, C, D, whatever, I can change those and I can hit that. Oops, the sound list came up here, but here's my sounds here that I can pick. Uh, like if I don't want the Lao Maze Grand, I could pick. The New Age Stage Grand. See how... And it has...
has a full sound. Even in a multi mode, you get the full. It's very nice, actually. Okay. And the cool thing about this, as you would on the Kronos, but in here, it's also real easy to use with them, especially with the mouse, is you got all your effects that you can edit. These are your blocks. And you can edit these actually probably even easier with the mouse. And then your insert effect, just like on the Kronos, you can you can change this around. Your routings, which is cool. So here's Grand Piano 1. What's nice is that any, and anywhere that you click, you can double click or right click or use your little wheel. So watch on as I spin my wheel on the mouse. See how that changes? And that was on channel one. So so very nice. As a matter of fact, if I don't want it running through the compressor, I can have it running through. One second. We'll have it run through. That's 12. So all I have to do is go to 12, turn it on, pick an effect. I'm going to pick for this example. Look at all the effects. I mean, it just exposes how cool this really is. Uh, let's see. What do I want to put out here? Let's put an overb on it. Nice overb. So here it is. And then I go into number 12, and there's your overb. And like I said, you just click on it. Box turns red like this. And then you can adjust. Here's your size. Your wet dry, I'll take that down to. And then, you, and then they give you like a pre EQ on that uh, as well. And let's see, common, and then there's your effects overview, your MFX 1, 2, your total effects 3 and 4, I was going to say uh, your internal effects, what they Must be thinking about another keyboard here. Because I thought they gave you... I'll have to go uh, fact check this. I thought they gave you... Uh, on... Let me go in the track mixer. I think that's where it's at. Uh, let's see, play... Track mixer. I thought they gave you an EQ on every channel, like a like a two or three band EQ. I'm thinking that they do. Uh, but it doesn't look like they do it. So I'll have to go back to that uh, that notion about it. it. Says track EQ right here. Track mini track EQ. Here it is. Duh. Right here. So they also give you uh, a nice little uh, four band EQ. To shape your sound. And they just, and that's just the Kronos allowing you to And by hitting uh, on the Mac command and clicking it, sets it back to zero. That's pretty much for everything on here. Okay. Let's see. Pick it up a little bit. Okay, so that's really cool. And then, you know, you can access your pads. Being able to use these little virtual pads on the screen. 
So pretty much everything that you can do now, the one thing that, that varies and it's a little bit different, suppose I'm in here uh, like this and I wanna find a category or search by category. Uh, you click down here, right? So let's go bells and mallets. And when I click here, bells or mallets, let's say bells. And then to get to the sound, uh, you click that and then that is, so that's a little different from working actually on the chronos. I mean, you still can pick the sound. So that's a slight departure of doing category search. It kind of takes you out of that whole uh, plug-in mode. But one of the things I wanted to say, uh, the advantage of using this is really for sound searching. As you can see, what you can't do on the Chronos is see all 127 sounds per bank, per page. Uh, and that really actually is nice to be able to and the sounds change real fast. Go, go from here to a bass, to a lead. You know, so. And then when you want to sound, when you actually want to sound, you double click it. And it's rendering the, um, the screen, of course. And then you're back to normal, so. So. That's the Kronos editor, and hopefully you'll uh, you'll take advantage of it because it's uh, one cool editor library. And I also want to say that I believe MIDI Quest or Sound Quest, I think the same company, actually is responsible for making this plugin, and they sell a Mac and PC version of their Universal editor library. And it's real expensive; it's like five hundred bucks. But if you're someone that's got Tritons and 5080s and Motifs and, and some of the older gear, uh, it might be actually worth owning it. Because based on this editor library and if all their uh, support for external modules is anything remotely like this, I think it would be well worth the money. So um, I'll be looking into that and uh, uh, and we'll check on it later.